Lobo, the intergalactic bounty hunter and ruthless anti-hero from the planet Xarnia, could soon be gracing the silver screen. Now that the DCEU is no more, there is growing speculation that Lobo might finally get his moment in the spotlight. But who exactly is Lobo and what makes him such an intriguing character? Let's dive into the chaotic world of this enigmatic anti-hero. Don't struggle now. You'll just make them vengeful. <laughs> This planet is protected, alien. <laughs> the DC Universe is cooking up something huge. They're busy deciding which legendary heroes and villains will grace the screen in their upcoming project. Superman soaring through the skies, the Joker cracking wicked jokes, Wonder Woman kicking some serious butt, Aquaman ruling the underwater kingdom, Harley Quinn causing chaos with her mischievous antics, and of course, the one and only Batman brooding in his cave and cowl. The options are endless for co-CEOs James Gunn and Peter Safran, but with recent flops that included half of these well-known characters, DC should go to introduce something fresh, something that blows your brains out in space. Well, choosing a DC character to make a film about is like deciding which pizza topping to order. <laughs> it's a challenge, but a darn entertaining one. Though I do have one character in mind that you might know by now. I'd also like to know what characters you guys would like to see in this new DCU helmed by James Gunn, so comment down below and maybe we'll make a video on that. Also, on your way down, hit that like and subscribe buttons as well. Well, now this character might not ring a bell for everyone, Lobo. This guy's got a confusing history, folks. He burst into the DC comic scene in the 80s as a purple-haired, red-eyed, leotard-clad alien villain. Sounds pretty wacky, right? But wait, there's more. So Lobo went through more style changes than a fashion model at a runway show. In the 90s, he transformed into a bulked up, dreadlocked badass wearing biker gear, headlining his own gritty bounty hunting adventures. Now, you might be wondering why they even bothered with Lobo. Well, it turns out that he was originally created as a spoof, a satirical response to Marvel's Punisher and Wolverine, who were all about that brooding, dark comic book era. But guess what? Fans of the 90s grit quickly realized that there was more to Lobo than just a parody. They latched onto this anti-hero like there was no tomorrow and embraced his rough and tumble antics with open arms. This guy has rocked everything from pirate attire to bishop's robes, the man's walking like a fashion chameleon. And let's not forget about his glorious mane, which is transformed from untamed locks to a suave pompadour. It's like he's auditioning for a role in a cosmic hair commercial. But Lobo's shape-shifting isn't limited to his sense of style. Oh no, his superpowers have gone through their own rollercoaster ride. Sometimes he's blessed with the ability to clone himself, creating an army of Lobos. Other times, his nose becomes as powerful as a cosmic bloodhound, allowing him to sniff out his bounty across galaxies. It's like he's a superhero buffet, with new powers on the menu every day. With all of these unpredictable changes, you might think that Lobo is harder to define than a Rubik's Cube in a hurricane, but fear not, there are a few things that stay true throughout his ever-shifting saga. Lobo remains a force to be reckoned with, taking on both DC superheroes and joining forces with them when it suits his chaotic nature. Whether he's rocking a three-cornered hat or a holy robe, and regardless of the weird and wonderful abilities he possesses at any given moment, Lobo's essence as a relentless and a powerful character shines through. The most obvious consistency in every iteration of this mercurial character is Lobo's background. This guy is a true force to be reckoned with, hailing from the distant planet of Zarnia. And let me tell you, Zarnians are no ordinary bunch. They're like a cosmic gem, pumping iron and getting those protein shakes on a daily basis. Lobo's Zarnian heritage is the source of his strength. We're talking about a guy who can go toe to toe with the invincible Superman, even without a single speck of kryptonite in sight. His muscles have muscles! But that's not all. Lobo has a laundry list of powers that will make any superhero jealous. He can run faster than the Flash himself, heal so quickly it's like he's immortal, spot weaknesses in his enemies with just a glance, and even sniff out trouble with his super-powered nose. And hey, did I mention he's also a certified genius? Yeah, this dude's got it all! And at one point, Lobo could clone himself with a mere good drop of blood. It was like a red liquid buffet for Lobos. However, they dialed back on that power after a while. Although in the animated series Young Justice, they brought it back for a wild ride when thousands of tiny Lobo clones sprouted from droplets of his spilled bloodbath bonanza. Now, Zarnia wasn't always this post-apocalyptic wasteland we associate with Lobo. No, it was once a peaceful utopia. But guess who ruined that tranquility? That's right, our lovable anti-hero himself. 
Loba decided to release a plague of mutant scorpions that wiped out every single resident of Zarnia. And guess what he called himself afterward? The Last Zarnian! But hey, who knows, maybe there's another survivor hiding somewhere in the comic book universe. And let's not forget about Lobo's reputation for interplanetary rampages. Rumor has it that he once annihilated an entire planet just because they couldn't find him a decent cigar. Talk about overreaction? No wonder Zarnians come up with the name Lobo, which in their language means he who devours your entrails and thoroughly enjoys it. It's certainly not a name that you want to mess with. The guy really knows how to embrace his villainous side. I mean, come on, he once decapitated a twisted version of Santa Claus in a Christmas comic special. Well now, no Santa is gonna ever put him on the naughty list. But here's the thing, even though Lobo is a merciless bounty hunter who would sell his own grandmother for the right price, the writers threw in a few curveballs to give him a hint of redemption. You see, Lobo lives by strict code. Once he gives his word, he's bound to fulfill it, no matter what it takes. This twisted sense of honour has even led him to fight for justice alongside some of his former rivals. And speaking of being paid, Lobo's allegiance always lies with the highest bidder. He's a true Zarnian for hire, ready to do whatever it takes to secure that sweet paycheck. This means he occasionally gets to don the hero cape, but let's be honest, it's all about the cash for him. However, amidst all of the carnage and the cold-heartedness, Lobo has a surprising soft spot for space dolphins. Yeah, you heard that right. He's all about protecting and feeding those graceful creatures and swim through the vast vacuum of space. It's a strange quirk that sets him apart from the usual superhero tropes of romantic love interests. Forget damsels in distress, Lobo's heart belongs to cigars and space dolphins. Despite his lone wolf persona, Lobo manages to forge a few lasting relationships along the way, adding layers of complexity to his character. Now you would think that a character with such a devoted following, including the legendary Stan Lee himself, would have leaped off the pages onto the big screen by now, but alas, Lobo's appearances outside of the comics have been limited. Sure, he's made some animated cameos in shows like Superman, the animated series, Young Justice and Justice League Action, and even had his own short-lived series that people seem to have forgotten about. But when it comes to live action, Lobo's only major appearance was in the second season of Sci-Fi's Krypton, where he served as a secondary villain for a four-episode arc. The network even toyed with the idea of giving him his own spin-off, but unfortunately, that fell through when they pulled the plug on Krypton. It's like the universe is teasing us with the prospect of a Lobo feature film only to leave us hanging. This pull was largely reminiscent of the consistent announcements followed by the stagnation of a Lobo feature film from Warner Brothers. Fans have hoped for a live-action Lobo film since Warner Brothers announced in 2009 that Guy Ritchie would direct a film about the gritty anti-hero. However, Ritchie eventually left the project to work on a Sherlock Holmes sequel. Over the next decade, the director's chair was passed to Brad Payton, then to Jason Fox, and finally to Michael Bay. Despite the addition of talent such as Dwayne The Rock Johnson for Payton's version, as well as extensive pre-production and screenplay development, each chapter of this Lobomania would end with the project being shelved. However, the character seems to be getting a lot of buzz at the moment. With a new DCU, Lobo could finally make his debut on the big screen, but most importantly, who will be chosen to bring this beloved character to life? I personally think Jason Momoa is a good fit. Let me know what you think in the comment section though.